Alright, what is going on my lovely ladies and gentlemen? As you can see from the title screen as well as- Wow, I thought that was actually a K- I thought it was K-U, not K-I. Good thing we started at the title screen. Uh, as you can see, this is Tokiden Kiwami. Kiwami? Kiwami? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand pronunciation. Doesn't make sense to me. Nothing makes sense. Language is weird. Language is fucking weird. But so, uh, basically the reason why I'm recording this, number one, why the hell not? Number two, probably a lesser known game, so there might maybe somebody, you know, like kinda has heard about this in passing, but then kinda forgot about it, and then you'll see this again, and you'll be like, oh, I really wanna play that. I'll fucking know. Main reason, however, is because Monsieur Zork the Dork uh, saw me playing it when I was uh, on PSN, and was like, oh, hey, you know, I've heard about that game, I heard it's got some similarities to Monster Hunter, how is it? Number one, it's very obviously, uh, <laughs> very clearly taking some ideas from Monster Hunter like if you just look if I was not in this is the town right now if I went on a mission and you looked at like just the map uh, the overworld kind of stuff and you looked at you know the in-game map that they give you very clearly inspired by some Monster Hunter um, so I actually already recorded a video of this however I was very ignorant as to a few things features of the game, mostly the combat system, and the reason why is because I actually I didn't go through the tutorial because I'm an incredibly intelligent person. It don't need no tutorials. I, I needed the tutorials. Because originally, the way it was set up is it's like, the stuff that actually helped me was all the way at the bottom, and everything before that was just like weapon tutorials. So I thought, you know, like, oh, well, you know, the weapons aren't exactly very complicated. You have two attack buttons, a special attack button. Uh, and that's basically it. So I don't really need to know anything. But then, you know, in the original video, because I'm gonna, po I'm still gonna post that original video because I recorded it. So I'm gonna goddamn post it. But you're gonna see there's a few things where I'm like, what the hell is this that's going on? What the hell is this that's going? I don't know what any of these mean. Maybe it's just like a passive buff or something. It, it wasn't, it wasn't that. I know what it is now, but I didn't then. So that's why I'm recording another video. So I am not passing out information from a position of ignorance. I am no longer ignorant as to the inner workings of this game. I am a master. Not even close. I always, I want to, this is trying, this is me trying to rotate the camera. Because I feel like you should be able to rotate the camera. But for some reason, no matter what direction you press, like I'm spinning the uh, right analog stick in a circle right now. That's all I'm doing. It just zooms in. That's all it does. It does not change the camera. Same thing with the D-pad, apparently. Uh, but I always wanted to change the camera so I can like, you know, look around and shit. I don't get to do that. So anyway, let me just go through, you know, kind of like the mission prep so I can again show you more similarities to Monster Hunter. This guy is my Tenko, I, be Tenko, I believe is uh, what it is, and they are basically the felines of this game, like in Monster Hunter, I don't know if they're specifically called felines, it's been a while since I played Monster Hunter, but you had these cat-like creatures that you could send out to specific maps while you go out on a mission, they're gone for a specified amount of time, and then when they come back, they bring you resources from wherever they sent you. Same exact thing here, so you see I got some shit from him. Coolio, it might be a her, I don't actually know. Dude's my motherfucker's adorable though. And then, as you can see, you have the mood meter, so the higher it is, I think the more stuff it'll bring back to you at the end of the mission. So the fox rice is the most basic one, it'll raise its mood by one. This one will raise its mood by two. I believe this one will always raise its moods to max. So we want it max, but just like this dude's so fucking adorable. Oh, I canceled out the animation. But just look how adorable this motherfucker is. Can you hate this guy? This dude is lovely. Um, unfortunately, one thing you might, you probably actually won't see it, because I'm, I'm, I don't think there will be any cutscenes, but if you do see cutscenes, the character's eyes in this game freak me out. Like, the character models themselves, pretty solid. The character eyes look dead and glassy as fuck, and it is actually, like, disconcerting to have to sit there and stare at that shit. It really scares me. This, the Guardian Tree, is the same kind of deal, um... You have a, you pay this dude money, your your money in this game is called Haku, uh, and basically you get that by completing missions, whatnot. Sell, you can sell resources as well, I don't really do that, I probably should because I'm probably maxed out on a bunch of resources, but you give this dude Haku, you go on a mission, you come back, you call, and he'll just give you a random set of items. He can level up, you know, the more Haku you give him, uh, the higher it'll level. I don't know why I'm attributing gender to a tree. <laughs> uh, the higher, the more Haku you give it, the higher it will level up, and so I assume, you know, either you get more, because sometimes I've gotten up to three, usually, like, right about now, I get two or three things from it, and I assume, like, the pool of items you can get 
gets rarer the more you level it up so you want to continue giving this dude haku um then you have the blacksmith right here you can either create weapons or you can what well, i'm going to do upgrade weapons so if you look underneath the name right there of Thony and Naginata plus two, you see that red bar? That means the level is full. So I can fortify this, get a little bit of an attack boost. Uh, that fills up through experience. Just the more you use it, the more it levels up. Usually, I mean, almost always, it'll you'll get a full level up if you fight a boss. If you don't fight a boss, you'll get like nothing. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's just, you don't attack enough to really get anything. But you can see there's a, a variety of weapon types, nine I think. Uh, I tend to use, like in the previous video, you'll see me use these, the dual knives. Uh, I also use the Naginata. The reason, number one, those two, those are both the most fast paced weapons in the game. But that's actually not the main reason why I use them. The main reason is because these two weapons are the only weapons in the game that have realistic aerial maneuvers with them. This weapon, uh, the Chain and Sickle. You can also use that to get some aerial hits, but it's not really... Because with uh, the Naginata, you can... It's the triangle, because you have square is your regular attack, triangle is kind of like your heavy attack, I guess, and circle is your special attack. This weapon's heavy attack is kind of like a lawn... Like a, you know, if you would imagine a launcher in any other game, it doesn't actually launch your opponent. But, you know, when you're fighting a big boss, you can use that to like kind of jump up to about their head level. You get a lot of height with it. Uh, with the dual knives it's kind of similar but you can do it repeatedly in the air and each time you hit an enemy with it you'll get a little bit higher into the air so you can use that repeatedly to get to the height you need whereas with the chain and sickle that has this move where it's like you launch the chain at somebody and it'll like connect to them and so you kind of just go through and you pull yourself towards them so you're in the air but there's no height altering stuff after that that i'm aware of um, so like you're kind of just you can get to like knee level of large things and you can't get any higher than that Which isn't useful. So just the simple fact that I can do aerial stuff with the dual knives and the Naginata is actually the main reason why I use those two But anyway, I don't want to get too in-depth with the weapons because that would take me forever to explain everything You're gonna see the Naginata and you'll see a little bit of the dual knives um, So we'll get into that. Oh also it's the same exact system for um, Armor, I don't think I can upgrade this shit yet. Nope so you can look at creation also you know there's different elemental stuff you can every single boss that you fight has a different elemental weakness i haven't actually been tailoring my stuff because right now i think i only have uh, a wind a regular one a wind one and a flame one but i mean you can you know if you really want to you can tailor the elemental weakness to whatever you're going out to fight at that point in time but i find it incredibly unnecessary because this game is actually not terribly challenging um, which is pro kind of a flaw. So right here is your average merchant. Um, this right here. Damn it, I can't use the pool of purity. Well, I can't use the pool of purity. Let's just go use the pool of purity. Uh, right now it's only open to men. As you can see, this my character is not a man. But we're just going to go over here anyway. Can we invite somebody when we... Aw, oh, we can't. That'd be awesome. Um, once you get... Oh, we do get to use the pool of purity. So just doing this... You get a potential passive boost. Um, that kind of segues into one of the other features of this game called the Matama. Um, and so they're kind of like spirits that you can grab so you can equip a Matama So you see right there that little portrait to the right That's the Matama I have equipped to bring with me into the bath. That sounds weird um, But then you can come over here And this allows you to upgrade Matama or pacify them pacifying them allows you to reset them because they only have you see that little spot right there uh, in the bottom right that says boosts um each Matama can only have a maximum of three boosts at a time. So you'll see right here, since this guy's level four, uh, I upgrade him, and now I have to choose. So resetting, I don't think I... Maybe. We're going we're gonna to replace that one. Um, but yeah, so pacifying allows you to reset them back to level one and just basically, you know, re redo however much... Uh, or their statistics, whatever you want to do. Not statistics, their passive boosts. However you want to deal with them, and then you can equip different Matama to your weapons. And every single Matama also has a set of active abilities on, on top of the... So let me see. So let me go over here. Next page, right there. So you, there are these abilities. You have to hold down the R1 in the map. You'll see me do them, but they have different effects. I'm not actually sure what this increases. Movement speed and focus recovery speed nullifies all attacks for one time only. Nullifies all attacks for one time only? I, I don't understand. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Maybe it's just, you know, will nullify the first attack that you get hit by ever. So that's what it means by all. Is it like there's nothing that can bypass it but just once? I guess. 
Oh, effect continues until you take damage. That's cool. Increases attack speed and decreases the amount of focus used for a limited time. Wow, that's actually really... That is actually a very useful one for the Naginata. Um, so anyway, now that I've taken way too long to explain all of this shit... <laughs> there's different forms of Naginata... I'm not different forms of Naginata. There's different forms of Matama. Um, do I have any? I don't have any stuff. This is just collect stuff. Sometimes, like the ones I have active... Uh, require me to kill specific things. 200 of those, good god. They require me to kill specific things, and so you have to have those active because they won't count unless you have them active, I believe. Uh, but missions are the meat of it. Now, my prob one of my main problems with this game, like my two main problems with this game, number one, it's just not very hard. It is not a terribly difficult game. Uh, but number two, it's very repetitive as well. So, like, you see this. Slay one... Pyroteryx, like that's just that's the entire mission of this. Slay one Bladewing, Slay one Jolix. I believe I have fought at this point four of these. I have probably fought six of these. I think I've only fought two of these, but that's one of the newer bosses. So like you are fighting the same bosses, the same big monsters, kind of over and over and over as you move through the game. It does get very repetitive, and it's very sad. So you add in the fact that like. Once you really understand a monster, it gets just that much easier. Um, I'm not going to do that one. That was going to take forever. Slay one Edax. So you see this one. Slay one Edex. Edax. Whatever. That's the exact same monster as this Jolix. It's just a powered up version of it. It's just a stronger version of it. There's, so there's... That's how a bunch of it is. Like, it's really kind of disappointing. I fucked that one. The Terra Grinders suck. I hate them. Oh my god. These are all... I actually don't have a single... Is a Harrow half no? No, it's not. I've fought two of those. I was hoping there might be like a new one that I could fight, and there's not. Shit. So I guess I'm just gonna. We're gonna go with this one because that's where my Tenko is. We're gonna go all females because you know that's the kind of person I am. Uh, you can do this. You can form a secondary party. Again, this is basically just uh further. It's the exact same thing as all the other resource gathering things. You just send them out to a specific mission, and they will gather resources. This is basically equivalent to uh, the game's cooking, to Monster Hunter's cooking. You get a passive effect. It's not as like focused. Whereas you know, with Monster Hunter, I'm pretty sure you can, you pretty much know what you're gonna get. Whereas with this one, you're basically praying to get a boost, and then there's like you know, it's just an option that you can get in any passive. Like you know, it's just there's just a pool of passive boost that it can potentially give you, but you don't, you only, you don't know exactly. Ah, oh, we got a bad one. This makes me sad. So you see this right here. This is one of the uh, some of the boss fights. You have to actually track them down in a map that has up to like ten rooms that you have to travel through to find the boss. And there's other ones like this where they only give you one room and you just go straight to the boss. It's unfortunate that we got the ladder. I would have preferred the former because it shows off more of the game, shows off the exploration. So you see, this right here is, I think it's called like, the Thousand Eyes or something like that. Any of those white parts, you can cut off so you can do damage to the limbs and you can cut them off. Unfortunately, that has no practical effect uh, in regard to what the monsters themselves are capable of. So it's not like there's any one, you know, like super attack tied to a monster's right arm or something. And if you cut that right arm off, then they can't use that super attack. It's just the only feature is that you can cut limbs off and then you do this right here. This is holding down R1. Anything within that circle is gets what they call purified. And when you're purifying something, when you finish purifying something, you get an item from that. So that's basically the only purpose of cutting off their limbs is that you can potentially get a rare item from it. But it doesn't have any effect on, you know, like the abilities that they can do. So let's go actually fight now. I'll explain a little bit about the Naginata while I'm doing it. The Naginata is kind of a rare weapon. Well, one of the differences you'll actually notice right now uh, between this game and Monster Hunter. In Monster Hunter, pretty much everything you do... Oh, wow, somebody knocked... Oh, no, never mind. That's one of his attacks. He just falls over on you. Um, oh, shit. Damn it, I got hit. Um, it doesn't take... I didn't do any damage to me, but it still counts as a hit for some reason. Um... But yeah, so in Monster Hunter, pretty much everything you do is going to cost stamina. Oh, dear God, no. Dear God, no! That attack hurts quite a bit. Uh, any it's Anything you do, any action you do is going to cost stamina. As you can see right now, my regular attacks are not costing... They call it focus in this game, but it's not costing me anything. Uh, and so it's the same thing with pretty much all normal attacks. Uh, the exception I'll show you right now, aerial attacks... Staying in the air does cost stamina. 
and you also the other downside to it is that if you get hit while you're in the air you take more damage i don't know what the exact percentage is but you do take more damage um so you gotta be careful oh, shit you gotta be careful with that so one thing you may be wondering what's this aura around me right now i should actually be using my passive boosts um so this aura around me right now the Naginata is a very sorry I'm, I don't know why I'm trying to focus like I need to uh, the Naginata is a very momentum but heavily momentum based weapon and so when you have the like I guess it was kind of a beige aura around yourself why did that hit me um, you're at like level one and when you have the red aura you're at level two I'm actually not sure unfortunately I'm terribly sorry it's awful of me to not know this um, I think it just it affects your overall weapon damage like how much damage you do with each attack normally however the special attack which I'll hopefully get to as soon as I oh god as I get to red so this is my special attack right now. I can just continue to mash this. As you can see, it's taking stamina right now. We just cut off a limb. Awesome. Um, and I can continue that for as long as I have stamina for. Obviously, my stamina is gone now, and I think I missed that final attack, which just goes to show how amazing I am at this game. So we're cut. You can see we're kind of starting to churn through limbs now. Um, the higher your momentum is, and red is the highest you can get, is uh, the faster those attacks, those special attacks come. So you get more attacks. This game is awful right now. So, obviously, you get more attacks the higher your momentum is. So you want to try and maintain momentum. And there is one feature to this game, uh, to this weapon, I mean, that has that allows you to hopefully maintain that as much as possible. And that is every single weapon in this game has an attack that you can do using uh, a combination. You press... Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. I was looking down at the controller to make sure I knew what I was talking about. And I just ate a shit ton of damage for it. Um... You hit square and X at the same time, and um, that will allow you to do the special move. So since I lost my momentum anyway, her special move, the Naginata's special move is just a parry. So you just do that. To, I'm not actually sure like how good the parry is overall, because I haven't really gotten into using it. Because in general, again, it's like it requires you to get hit, and you don't usually get hit very often. So it's kind of irrelevant, and I'm kind of avoiding a bunch. You see all those gauges that are glowing? I should have been using stuff by now. So I'll use that right now. The other button combination, triangle plus circle. Uh, so you see me being connected to my allies with these blue auras. I'm hoping somebody else kind of comes forward and I get a, another one, at least three. I mean, at least two. There we go. So you press. It's not happening. Why is it not happening? There it is. Bam! So that happens. That will automatically cut off at least one limb. It will do massive damage overall. And you get that by just acting in concert with your allies. So like if you attack the same limb... Uh, if you purify stuff together, if you do, you know, like, if you buff each other, you use passive effects on each other, that kind of stuff. Those are the kind of things you need to do to build up that meter, and when you do, you get to unleash that attack, and it's very scary, and I should get the fuck out of here. And the other gauge you see up in the top left, that's your weapon gauge. It basically allows the same kind of a deal. It's just not quite as devastating, but it's, like, it's the same exact command. It's kind of the same thing. You cut off at least one limb. The difference is that you know, when you do the team one, you can potentially cut off two limbs if you're lucky. That one will only ever cut off one limb as far as I am aware. This dude is getting his day fucked up. I should probably target him. It is possible to target. I kind of don't, though. It's kind of the same thing. Like If you've played, uh, you know, like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, where like the bigger the mo the bigger your enemy is, kind of the more detrimental it actually to it is to actually lock onto them, and it's kind of the same deal here. Where like you want to be aiming, where you know like doing using this, it kind of centers you. Your attacks on their you know center of mass, whereas I want to you know normally now that all of his limbs are gone, it kind of it doesn't really matter. But um so yeah, that kind of just showed off. Like I kind of just button mashed the entire time. That's kind of this game. Like, again, there's not exactly a ton of challenge to it, unfortunately. I've heard, like, basically, if you want challenge, you have to get to the end of the game. And uh, and then, at that point, if you fight solo, if you don't use allies. what? Is, oh, that's my Tenko. 
Did I ever introduce? Let me see, let me see if this dude ever saw me on the map. I don't think he did, but watch what happens. Look at that! That's so fucking adorable. Ah! Um. So yeah, that's. Yeah. The Tenko, if you meet him on the map, uh, it'll purify stuff for you. So, like, if you're, you know, you want to stay focused on something, that dude will run around and potentially purify stuff for you so you don't have to worry about that aspect of it. But yeah, allies in this game are actually very, very useful. Like, I don't think, I think only once have I ever, have I ever had an ally, uh, go down. And it's not like, you know, they don't get, like, knocked out and returned back to base. You get knocked down and then... If you run up to them, you have the opportunity to hold down R1, um, and then that'll, like, revive them if you hold down R1 for long enough. So, like, I've never, again, just to kind of, I'm no, I'm by no means a master of this game. There's no way in hell I am, like, optimal with weapons in this game. I haven't really delved too deeply into it. Simple fact is, I am average at best at this game, and I have still not, like, I can count the amount of times that I have been knocked down on... A single hand and usually that's always when you know like you saw that attack that I got hit by when I said I was like you know kind of just staring at the controller wasn't paying attention to the screen how much damage that did that will almost always one-shot me if I get hit by it in the air and since you don't have an air dodge it is very realistic to potentially get hit by something like that while you're in the air and so because of the increased damage taken while you're in the air uh, it can hurt <laughs> quite a bit so usually that's uh, where it happens or you know like I'm just not paying attention something like that but I've never actually been like at that point my allies will always just come up and like revive me almost instantly so allies in this game are actually incredibly useful like to the point where I'm fairly certain if you really wanted to you could start up a mission get to wherever the hell you need to go to um, uh, finish your goal and just let the allies go nuts. Let your allies go nuts. You don't even have to, like, interact if you don't want to. You can just, you know, do something else. You can play a 3DS game, or you can play a game on your computer, or you can do whatever. Like, that's how effective uh, the AI actually is in this game. And so that's what I've heard is, like, if you want a challenge, number one, you have to get to the late game fights to begin with. Number two, you have to fight those fights solo. <laughs> Otherwise, this game is not challenging. So that's kind of a bummer in comparison to Monster Hunter, where Monster Hunter is pretty damn challenging it actually is kind of just the disparity between how much uh stamina you know how in this game you can do normal attacks without consuming stamina so you have a lot more offense at your disposal it's a lot more faster paced you can deliver a lot more damage uh, a lot quicker than you potentially could in monster hunter and but again you know just the, also the fact that like you don't even really you rarely have to actually worry about getting hit Whereas in Monster Hunter, pretty much getting hit is universally a bad thing. You just you do not want to get hit in Monster Hunter. Um, so yeah. I do, I mean, it is kind of enjoyable for a while, but like right now, I'm fairly certain that, you know, once I hit stop recording, I'm popping this out of my PS4 and sending it back to Gamefly. Because... It's very, again, like I said, you know, I'm fighting the same bosses over and over. It's very repetitive. And that's kind of a bummer. Like, if I was switching up weapons every single time, maybe that might fix it. But I don't really care for probably about half the weapons in this game. Like, you have bow and arrow and gun. I don't care about those. Um, the sword is kind of ant. Like, it's real. It's super, super basic. And, like, you saw how basic the Naginata was. It's even more basic than that. So, like, there's not a lot of weapon depth in this game. Versus, you know, you look at shit like, what was that? What One of the newer weapons in uh, the newest Monster Hunter. I'm trying to think of what it was, but it was that shit. Was it the gun? Sh no, it wasn't the gun shield. But it was that thing that you could transition between, like, a massive shield or a massive sword. And, you know, like, you could do things with it that, like, you know, powered up the... I don't know. I can't even remember. I'm so bad. My memory is so bad. I didn't play enough of the game to really have that information solidified in my mind but it was one of the two new weapons and the other one was like that uh that shit where you use the bug to like send it out at specific body parts and shit whatever that was the, whatever the new weapon was that wasn't that one i used that quite a bit and i greatly enjoyed it because there was a lot of depth in what was available to you depending on you know like your timing because i believe that thing had kind of like a parry-ish thing or i think it was actually armored where you could trigger the armor cancel out of the armor get this massive boost and then just like do this utterly annihilating attack on somebody you know, like that kind of thing this game is kind of missing that level of like reactive stuff you know this game is kind of more centered around you're just attacking 
and that's kind of it. There's no real particularly special elements to weapons. Um, and there's, again, that kind of, you know, that kind of removes depth from the weapons. And so it's definitely, you know, if you're trying to think, you're know, like, oh, I can play Monster Hunter or I can play this game, I would definitely say Monster Hunter is probably your best bet. But that being said, uh, I didn't really like the controls, the mobile controls for Monster Hunter. And so if you're like me on that one, then you, this may be the game for you because I really... I don't have the same, like, I have issues with the camera control in that game. I don't like using the, uh, that rotate pad, the circle pad that the 3DS has. I really hate that. I just, I don't have, like, a good reason. It's just uncomfortable for me. I don't like it. I don't enjoy using it. And everything, you know, all of your movement is centered around using that in Monster Hunter on the 3DS. So, unfortunately, I can't, I didn't really delve into that game as much as I might have wanted. But we persevere in light. There are plenty of other games for us to play. I just wanted to show this off. And like I said, there will be another video of this that will show off the dual knives where I will be significantly more naive and stupid and you will laugh at me. And that's what this is all about. So thank you for watching.